Well, good morning. How is everyone doing today? It is January the 30th, 2022, and we are going to get started. Um, right now, Pastor Erica and the church is holding service. Got it. Understood. Um, for you who are my youth group, um, I know you guys have a hard time going to church or getting there and have a hard time coming on and getting online too. So I made this video so that we can still learn even though we are um, on lockdown for the most part. Um, understand that um, we'll be going back to school tomorrow and therefore we will probably be going back to in-person um, in person meetings at the church uh, starting on Wednesday. Now that's not a something set in stone. It is something that I plan to do though. So with that being said, let's get started with some music. And something that I kind of like. Unfortunately, I'm going through YouTube, so <laughs> get bear with me. So here it is. Let's get rid of all distractions. Let's start focusing. Wherever you are right now, I want you to be focusing on, on the Lord and the things that he's done for you this week. Focus on all the troubles that you had this week, things that you can give to him.
All right. Now we've got our minds at least focused on what we believe and that we believe in ourselves. God does believe in us. So let's go ahead and start thinking about those things. Those things that we had problems with last week, the things we have problems with this week that's coming up. I know you all have tests to take. You have to go back to school, um, get yourselves back to in the swing of things. So let's pray for that. Dear Lord, thank you for giving us this time to talk and to, to commune together. It is a weird thing to have us be online for now, but Lord, just give us the hope and, and the presence of mind so that we can continue worshiping and talking about you when we go back in person learning. Help us to go ahead and get ourselves back into church and not be lazy and, and focus on what we think we can do online. Many of our students don't like being online and I thank you for that and because I'm just showing that they are craving a connection connection with you and a connection with other people and connection with like-minded believers, like-minded students. Help us continue working through you in love. Keep us working towards patience, kindness, confidence, and humbleness so that we can be selfless, truthful, and we can persevere. Lord, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so that's so what we're going to do to get started. First things first, our last, um, the, the memory verse that we had for Wednesday that we went through was God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The second verse was God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved, which was a pretty awesome start. And then our next verse that we are learning, that we're supposed to be learning by Wednesday, is, I believe, is 1 John 4, 8 and 9. And I have not finished memorizing it, but I'll go through it. And it says, hmm, hold on. <laughs> Back to First John. Oh, come on! You know how that goes. They want to give you a. Let's see, First John. I'm going to have to memorize it too. Four, eight, and nine says, "Whosoever does not love does not know God, because God is love." I should have known that one. And the second one, this is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only son into the world that we might live through him. The reason why I put those two verses together because they combine to each other. They 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 co they coordinate with each other. Because in one respect it says believe on him and you shall have everlasting life. Well how do you believe on him? Live through him. That's the key. Living the life, living a life of love like he did, that's your key. So, moving moving on from there, those are your memory verses. That whosoever, was whosoever, oh boy, here I go again. <laughs> oh man, did I forget it that fast? Ah, it is the life force. Whosoever does not love does not know God. And wh whoever doesn't love does not know God because God is love. And this is how we, God showed his love among us. He sent his son, only one and only son into the world that we might live through him. So let's get those verses down because those verses go in your brain and they get inside there and they stick. Because no one can tell you, show you, push your buttons, make you feel like you don't know what you're talking about. Memory verses are there to help you Encourage yourself and be confident in the love of God that you know and have. So today's scripture for our lesson is going to be basically what Pastor Eric is doing, which is 
um, Luke. And let's see. Hmm. No, I got to get back there. Hold on. We're going to Luke. Everybody know where Luke is, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke. This is the third, birth, third chapter in the New Testament or New Testimony. The testimony of Jesus Christ. It's the New Testimony. The New Testament. And we are going to be in the, let's see, what chapter are we on now? Fourth chapter? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I done made a mistake. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm going to take a little time to figure out where I'm supposed to be. Because I cannot remember. It was simple, but I did not remember it. And unfortunately for you, I'm going to have to go and take some time and figure it out. <laughs> Hope today's been good to you. It's 1055. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Now remember, tonight at 630, we will be having youth group online on Zoom. I'll be sending you those links here soon. The chapter we're going to is chapter 10. All right. And chapter 10, verse 23 through 24 is where the sermon is being taken from. But I want us to go a little bit deeper, a little bit further. Our time here is going to be precious so we know what we're supposed to do, how we're supposed to do it. God wants us to study and so that we will be rightly able to abide the word of truth. The word of truth comes from Jesus who is the embodiment of love so that we can show love to all. That is why we're here. That is what we're supposed to be doing. So, um, verse, we're going to read verse 23 and 24. Okay. So, verse says, Then he turned to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings wanted to see what you see, but did not see it. They wanted to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Now, you notice the words, did not. Wanted to, but did not. All right. So in your mind, what does that make you think? Is it that they did not because they couldn't, because they didn't have enough information? Or they did not because they didn't want to? That's the question you have to ask yourself. Sometimes we don't hear things because we don't want to hear them, especially when it's true about something we don't want it to be true about, such as a girlfriend, a boyfriend, um, a friend of ours. We don't want to hear the truth, even though it's there to be said, either by other friends, by pastors, by parents. These are things we don't want to hear. So I don't know what this case is. So let's go ahead and find out. We're going to start reading. We're going to move above. We are at 23, so we're going to go up to, let's start at, let's start at 21. See how far we need to go. And it says, at that time, what time? Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit. Now he had joy. He was happy of the Holy Spirit and said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. This was his good work. And the word here for, um, for, for hidden, it is basically something that's been said that not everybody understands. Let's find out what that was. Let's move up further. Let's start at hmm. We're going to start at one. 
you know, I know we don't like to read all the time, but that's okay. I'm doing the reading, but I need you to listen. I need you to understand what's happening. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. So picture this. Jesus is in his area of, of, of preaching now. And so instead of sending himself, he sends out 72, two by two. If you guys do the math, understand how many different towns he sent his disciples to. He sent them to 36 towns because they went two by two. So those 36 towns were blessed by the disciples of Jesus Christ. Now, this is what he said. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers or laborers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. He's giving a type of picture of the harvesting. Harvest at this point in time, if you understand what harvest means, some of you do, some of you do not. But harvest is basically going out, picking up all the vegetables, all the fruit, putting them in a basket so they can be ready to go to market. That's the whole bottom line of harvesting because you're basically, you, you spend all your time preparing. You're doing everything you can to prepare. You're watering the plants. You're fertilizing the plants. You put dirt and keep the dirt good and soil and moist for the plants. You make sure they got plenty of sunlight. I mean, everything you've done this far, you got to where the plants now are, 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 are strong. Now that they're strong, now they need to produce fruit. They need to produce things for the other people, for people to eat. He's liking us as disciples to that, that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And that means there's a lot of people out there who need the love that he has to show but there's very few people out there to show it. Did you get that? Okay, I need you to understand that is it. The laborers are few. There's not enough people out there to show the love that he wants to be shown to other people. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of meanness out there who don't want to hear it either. So let's go on. Verse number three, go. I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Notice what he said. I'm sending you out as lambs among wolves. Okay, they're out there. There are people out there going to tear you down. There are people out there that are going to make fun of you. There are people out there that are going to say so many different things, rumors and gossip. Don't you engage in that because that's what's going to happen. It's going to happen to you because you're doing the right thing. I'm going to, I'm going to pause here at three. And I want to say something to you. Those of you who have taken the challenge of being a disciple of Jesus Christ, of being the person that you're supposed to be in love, you have to understand this is not something you graduate from. You know, I've, I've, been, I've been asked a couple different times in my life, is when do you stop going to church? When do you graduate from, from following all these meetings and doing all this stuff? When do you graduate? The answer is you never do. Something I heard a long time ago, and I take my glasses off right now because it's, the glare is in my eyes. So something I learned a long time ago is graduating from God means you're dead. All right? Graduating from this life, I should say, means you're dead. We never graduate. We continue moving because there's many people out there who need us as Christians, as disciples. There's students out there who need you to be on your on your best behavior. You're representing something. You're representing who Christ is. So if you're out there like everybody else and jumping around and, and drinking, and I don't mean against drinking and all that, but I mean as a young, a, a young adult, you're getting drunk, hurting yourself, drugs, hurting yourself. These are things that you, you, you ought not do. You represent yourself. You represent Jesus 
and you represent God, and you represent Asbury. Your representation means something. It means a lot. You're part of a group. You're part of you're part of a clan. If you didn't know anything else, you're part of a clan. A clan of people who don't take Christianity as a religion, but Christianity as a lifestyle. I'm not saying we're not going to have fun. It's not about not having fun. What it is about is showing love and making sure you're doing everything you can to show love to people. Sometimes that entails us not doing some things. Sometimes it entails us not saying some things we know somebody might need to hear. Or it's not the right time. It causes us to have patience. That's what this life is about. I took on this life a long time ago. I did it as a teenager. It's been rough. I've had to deal with so many different people, so many different personalities. But consequently, it's helped me. So I say all that because I want you to understand it's not going to be easy. It's not meant to be easy. But why the Holy Spirit is there. You know, it, it helps you get through things, especially things that are, are devastating, such as loss of a loved one. All right. So we're going to move on. Verse number, verse number four. It says, do not take a purse or bag or sandals. Do not greet anyone on the road. Five, when you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If a man of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. If not, it will return to you. Now, sometimes you might hear things and under, not understand what he's saying. He's saying, when you go, don't take nothing with you. You're going to be basically like a, a bum on the street. The Pureness of heart is what a pure person will see. Okay, so how does that apply to us? Don't put yourself out there as being something holier than thou. Okay? The way you witness is how you love. Your witness for God is how you love, how patient you are, how kind you are how confident you are, and how humble you can be. Those are the ways that we show people who we are. That is our peace. If you understand that, that is something that you need to hold on to. Because if someone doesn't return that peace to you, then guess what? You bring your peace back to yourself and you move on. That's what it's saying here. As they were to walk through the towns, they weren't supposed to have anything with them. If a person such as, let's say, a homeless guy comes to you, all right, it's, it's hard to, to think about. This guy comes up to me, dusty feet, robe, maybe a robe, you know, he's, he's not, he's not, he's clothed, but he doesn't have the best clothes on. But he comes to you and says, peace be to you. And it's not so much of the words. It's the feeling. It's the, 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 what's the word? I want to say aura, but it's, it's a, it's a instinct, an intuition. It's something there that you can pick up. And that's what Jesus was wanting to see. The purest people who have peace inside will see his disciples coming to them. And he says, if a person, a house that you go to, and they say, you say to them, peace be unto you. And they say, peace be back unto you. Your peace is gone unto them. Your, 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 your love, your happiness, your desires to help goes to them. If it doesn't, and that person doesn't respond, their peace will come back to you. And you move on to the next person. Because it says here, Say to the house, eating and drinking. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> my glasses are not on, so I'll be a little closer. It says, uh, 
verse 6, if a man of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. If not, it will return to you. Stay in that house, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. And that's talking about the person of peace, not the person that didn't have peace. The person who, the, the, the man of the house, the woman of the house who had peace on of you, you basically commune with them. And that's what it's saying to eat and drink whatsoever is there because you deserve to have wage, the wages of a worker. What it's saying is you work every single day as a child of God. You work every day. And in that work, you deserve to have a reward. That reward is somebody actually listening to what you have to say, actually seeing what you do and want to know why. Inquire about you. And it says, don't move around from going balancing around from house to house. Okay? It, it doesn't mean, it, it, if you think about this, think about this. A house is like a person. Okay? If you go to one person and you're hanging out with that person and that's your friend or you become friends, you're not going to just drop him off and go find another friend. You're not. You're always going to have that link, that connection with him. That's what he's saying here. Keep that connection. You can go to different places, you know, make other friends, but you keep the connections with the friends that you make because that peace is always going to be needed. One thing is when you have a lot of people or you have a bunch of people who know you, who have peace with you, who have love for you, you can always relish, always feel confident in the fact you have them. Next one. When you enter a town and are welcome, eat what is set before you. Then it says these words. This is really rough or really challenging for us in this day and age because it says, heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God is, is near you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God is near you. So let's break that down a little bit more. 10.9. It says, heal the sick. In this day and age, sick people go to the doctor, they go to the hospital, they even go to the nurses or hear nurses coming. So what sickness are we going to be able to heal as kids? What sickness can we heal? Well, number one is loneliness. Number two, suicide because of loneliness, sadness because of loss. And the words here, and it's so interesting, the fact that it says the kingdom of God. Who is God? That's right. God is love. So we replace the word God with love. We get the kingdom of love is near you. The kingdom and every kingdom has a king and you can be a king of your own kingdom. You don't have to have a lot of people because you run your own ship. You have your own kingdom. You're you. So your kingdom, the kingdom of love is showing you what you need to do to help that person. That's how I'm interpreting I'm just saying the fact that the words are saying the kingdom of God is near you. When you have God near you, you know it. Why? Because you can feel the love coming from somewhere. And hopefully it's coming from you. Number 10. But when you enter a town and are not welcome. All right, here we go. Remember I told you part of love is protection? Jesus is displaying that right now. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into the streets and say, even the dust of your town that sticks to your feet, we wipe off against you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God is near. 
Now that one is a little bit more ominous because you're not welcomed, okay, in this town or in this house. If you're not welcome, he's saying, even the dust is not worthy to be on you. Even, even being in, in their presence is not even worth being on you. Their breath doesn't even, it does not even need to be a part of you at all. It is saying that when you have someone around you and you've got a lot of kids around you that want to accept you for who you are in Christ, who you are in love, and they can't accept that, you don't need to be around them. You need to breathe their air. You you don't need to be around at any any which way, shape, or form. But he says the kingdom of God is near, and I say that because outside of love is judgment. Because God can be both. God is love, but He's also judgment too. He loves those who love Him. He wants us to love those who don't. But he has the vengeance. Remember, God says, don't take evil for evil. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. That's what he's saying. So if you're getting ridiculed by the things you say or how the things you are, just for Jesus' sake. And that was what I said, for Jesus' sake. If you get your own self into some hot water because you said something stupid, that's all on you. But if you said something in defense of someone or saying something to, to defend yourself in a certain situation and you get ridiculed for that, so be it. It's part of your life because Jesus got ridiculed for being right and doing the right things. So basically, shake the dust off your feet and move on. Next. Number 12. I tell you. It will be more bearable for the day of Sodom than for that town. Dang. Sodom was destroyed. Okay? Sodom and Gomorrah, they were destroyed. He said it'd be better for them. It'd be better for Sodom and Gomorrah than for that place that didn't accept you or didn't welcome you. Those are harsh words. But you got to think about it. Let's, let's put it in perspective. If you're not willing to accept someone who's showing you love, who's showing you patience and kindness, if you're not willing to accept that, how dark is your heart? How hurt do you have to be for you not to welcome that? That's, that's basically what it's saying. It's not saying it's unredeemable. It's just at that point in time, basically they lost God. They lost a gift of God. You, they lost a gift. You know, and sometimes you lose the gift, and you may not give it back. You know, how many of you had something that you really, really wanted? I mean, really wanted. You had it in your hand, and something happened, and it fell out and broke. That's the worst feeling in the world. Or something that you really needed and, and, and something happened to it, it got stolen or anything. It's probably, if, if it's the worst thing in the world to even happen, you always miss the things you, you, you didn't care about or care for. You miss out. Don't you be that person to miss out. But others may miss out on you. Next verse. It says, woe to you. And it's a word here. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure why it says Chorazin. Um, woe to you, Bethesda. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre or Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. Now, we're going into some doctrine and, and, and some, some 
history. Uh, unfortunately, it's the history that I'm not too clear about because I'm not going to claim to know all of that. But gathering from what he's saying is that if the person that you are talking to does not have a little compassion or have an inkling of wanting to change, and that's what it's talking about. That's what sackcloth means. That's what um, repentance means. It means that you're you're basically um, feeling bad for what you've done or feeling bad for anything you've done in your past that you want to correct. It's giving people a chance to do that when they talk to you. And if they're not giving you that chance because you're showing them that love that they don't believe that they deserve in the first place. When you get a person that feels that way, they're going to be sorrowful. They're going to want to change. And you got to find it. You got to see it. So from that point on, we're going to move on to 16. We're going to jump over the other ones. It says, and he, he who listens to you listens to me. He who rejects you rejects me. But the one that rejects me rejects the one who sent me, which is Yah, God, Elohim. <laughs> Those are the things that you're saying. They're basically kind of like, you know, <laughs> when you think about God equals love. You know, love equals Jesus incarnate. I mean, you see those parallels? Well, that's what he's trying to say. He who listens to you, he who hears you, he who gives you the time of day to talk to them about their life and how much love they need to show. If they hear you. They hear Jesus. They can hear him saying, love is most important. They can hear him saying, be patient and kind. But guess what? If they're hearing Jesus, they're hearing God too. That's what's going to help them repent. It's going to help them bring themselves to want to be better than who they are. Seventeen. The seventy-two uh, returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submitted to us in your name. What does that mean? Even the demons submitted to you. Even the evil spirits, even the unclean spirits, even the, 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 the things that just are scary, even, they submitted in your name. Because his name is powerful. What power does he have? The power of love. It will always be there. It will never fail. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven, and I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the powers of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, this is the part that's really, let's listen real close, okay? And we're going to wrap it up here. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you. Why not, man? If I got spirits submitting to me, jumping out of windows, leaving, going crazy, you know, leaving people alone, I'm happy. But he says, don't be happy for that. But rejoice that your names are written in heaven. What the heck does that mean? He says that your names are written in heaven. Why? Because he's the one who summoned you. He's the one who sent you. Your names are written. All of you. Submit to love. And love will submit back to you. And not only will it submit back to you. But it will submit to God. And it will submit to Jesus. All the way up to heaven. Why? Because he sees you what you're doing. And the things that you're doing are right in line with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit of love is going to be your witness of who you are. Yeah, I know it's a lot of deep stuff, but I'm just giving you a little insight, a little inkling of how we are to treat each other, of what we need to talk about, how we need to be in life. Because life 
is coming. Kariana, Holly, and Kaiden, you guys are the youngest of the group. You still got a lot, a lot of stuff to learn. There's a lot of people that you got to see. There's a lot of things you got to do in life as you grow up. You older ones, Ethan, um, excuse me, Ethan and Gabby and uh, Lance, you guys are close, juniors and seniors in high school. You're almost out there in the real world. You need to be hook, line, and sinker in your faith, in Christian love. Not Christian religion. No. Christian love. That's what's going to set you apart. Sanctification means to be set apart. You all are set apart. Remember that. Because, see, devils can run all over the place. There's many priests out there who... who get rid of devils and cast out devils and all this other stuff that they do. But that doesn't mean they're written in the book of life, in heaven. It doesn't mean that. When you take on the job of being a Christ-like believer, it's a big job. Not everybody takes it serious. I got 13 of you. I know not everybody's going to take, take it serious. I hope one day you do. I hope my teachings help you get there. But your faith is your own journey. I'm just here to help you get to that point. You, um, Angel, um, then my middle kids, all the ones that are in, in middle high schools, just sophomores or freshmen, AJ, Braden, um, you got Sarah, who's a sophomore, and, and and Ella. I mean, you guys, not too far off. You're going to start getting jobs. You're going to start getting um, relationships. You're going to be start getting involved with girls and boys. You're going to be getting involved in a lot of things. You need to be grounded in your love and who you are as a Christ-like believer. You got to get it straight. I'm going to push it and push it and push it and push it until you just get tired of hearing me talk about love all the time. But that's okay. Because that's how you make it in. The last verse that I want to talk about, it says 1021. At that time, Jesus, full of joy. Why was he full of joy? Because his people did what he asked them to do. Notice that, full of joy. Because the joy of the people, of his disciples came back. It says, full of joy in the spirit, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for these, this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father, and no one knows who the Father is except the Son. And those who the Son chose to reveal him. Notice what it says. He chose you to be the persons and the people to reveal, the word reveal, to open up the curtain, to reveal him. How do we reveal him? We reveal him in our life. Our revel uh, us revealing who we are in Christ is the most important thing you can do. You can have every degree in the world because I have all knowledge and know how to speak in tongues, but have not love. I'm nothing but a clinking symbol. You see that? Yeah, I tied it back to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 13th chapter, the first verse. Yeah. Because it is just that. It is just that simple. It's simple enough that people who have all these degrees don't get it. 
just the simple things. You little children, you kids, the simplest thing. Just have a little patience, kindness. Showing honor to your mother and father, even if you don't necessarily agree. See, you can keep the Ten Commandments by following the love laws. The laws of God that came up through Jesus Christ, the first Corinthians 13th chapter, and said for you to what? Be patient, kind, confident, humble, tell the truth, selfless, come on, self-control. Being, being persevering through hard times, protecting others who need protection, including yourself. Come on, all the different characters that we've talked about the last three years. That's what he's talking about. The ability to do the things that Jesus talked about and said to do, it all wrapped up in your faith and your love. Love is stronger than you can think of. And we're not talking about that. Uh, the love of, 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 of Valentine's Day type of love. We're not talking about that. That's that affection that's called, um, what's it called? Eros love. We're not talking about that. We're talking about agape, ahaba, obligatory love. Love that we show when we don't like somebody very much. We still show them love, compassion, because we don't know what's going on in their life. I'm going to wrap up by saying this. If you haven't quite committed to the journey, I understand. Your kids, it's okay. But unfortunately, I've already revealed a lot to you. I've showed you who Jesus is. I showed you how he acts. You just got to carry it out. The greatest commandment, to love, your, love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself. Upon these hang the commandments, the prophets, the law, everything. Because we're not here to do away with the law. We're here to be better than it. That's just it. Better. It's a perfect analogy. You know, breaking the law, which I do all the time. <laughs> when you're driving a car and you have a 35 mile an hour 35 mile an hour um, zone. If you go 35 miles an hour, that's great. If you go 30 miles an hour, how even better? Now you're not in danger of breaking the law, are you? Because you have gone above and beyond to make sure you're not close to breaking the law. That's what the love, 1 Corinthians 13th chapter, shows you how to do. You don't even get close to committing adultery. You don't get even close to lying. You don't get close to dishonoring your parents. You don't get close to disrespecting God. Okay? You don't get close to it. Because you have enough love in you not to. It just wants you to be safe. So, with that, I'm going to leave you. With that in your thoughts and hearts and minds. Today at 6.30, we will have a, um, we'll have our meeting, and we'll just talk about things, converse things, um, about flourishing and getting better and, and getting, getting ourselves out there. So, if you pray with me, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for giving us this time to worship, giving us time to, for Sunday school. Give us the ability to adhere to your teachings, adhere to the love that you've given us, adhere to the things that we are so, so desperately needing to do for others. Lord, help us not neglect ourselves, but at the same time, not be selfish. Give us some peace of mind. Help us to be able to give peace to others and let them receive the peace that you've given us. And peace is another way of saying love. Help us show our love and our kindness. Let others receive it so that we can continue being in their lives. Help us understand that people are fickle and they don't always want help, no matter how much they need. 
Help us understand that we can control only what we control. We can't control the things that are outside of our control. Give us the wisdom to understand that. These are the blessings we ask in your son's name. And everyone say, Amen. All right, guys. Thank you for joining me today. Um, eventually, I'd like to go live and have you guys attend, but and not on our days of on our days of worship, which is Saturdays and Saturdays, Sundays, and Wednesdays. You know, I don't, don't want to necessarily do that. It might be sometime during the week. It might be on a Wednesday. It might be on a Thursday. You know, I might just have something to say, but I just want you to understand that this is something that you guys are are, are very much aware of and what you all can do to help yourselves. So I'm going to leave you with a song. <laughs> it's a song that I like from Huey Lewis and the News. Okay. Well, after this message from our sponsors. If you want to sign off, you can sign off. Thank you for joining me. I think it's coming up. There it is. All right, y'all. See y'all later. You know what? I need to put my glasses back on so I can see. <laughs>